great. Welcome to another episode of Keto Rocks. We're glad that you're joining us tonight. I'm Jim Hobbs, and to my left or right is Brian Damish Forsyth from Tennessee. At least I think he's in Tennessee tonight. Yeah, yeah, I'm home. Now, tomorrow night, you guys are actually going to be in Pennsylvania uh, playing at the Susquehanna Event Center. Is that the name of it? Yeah, supposedly, I guess it's a grand opening event or something, but yeah. Yeah, that was last minute. Yeah. Cool, well, cool though. <laughs> that's awesome. Do you guys know what time? Who's I know some, what's the name of the band that's opening up for Back in Black or something? Is that the name yeah. of the band? Uh-huh. Cool. And what time do you guys, do you guys know what time you guys go on yet? It's an early show. I think I saw, we go on around eight or so. So that's okay, so early. It's early. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's exciting for you guys to be back out into your, uh, your home turf and playing to your home crowd and, and just playing period. Yeah. It's yeah. These just the one-offs like this, that, you know, the last time we played was a private party in July and before that was March. So it was like, uh, you know, to, to try to get the set up to speed, you know, being able to play without having to think about anything just for one show. It's like, you know, you get to the end of the set and you're just getting warmed up and then, and then you stop for another few months. <laughs> that, that's what, It's a little bit more rough doing it that way. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah, we just got through watching on PBS. Uh, they were trying to raise money. They're always trying to raise money on PBS, which is okay. Uh, they just played a Fleetwood Mac concert that was recorded back in 1997. Uh, it's called Dance. And Peggy goes, man, they look like they're very lethargic. Like they're don't even want to be here. Um, so, but you know, I, I, I love their music, but Peggy said, man, you know, I so miss live music. I so miss live music. I mean, this very, very well may be the only way for us to be able to see it. I'm like, no, 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 no. They're, they're bringing it back. But I know the con, I know the event center that you guys are playing at is, you know, it's very scaled back in the number of, uh, people they're allowing to attend as well as they're taking every precaution uh, by taking your temperature and staying six feet or nine feet away from everybody. Um, so, you know, at least, at least people get a chance to hear, hear your music. You guys get a chance to play and hopefully that's going to start happening on a more routine basis as they find ways to be able to allow live music to be played once again at venues. So. Yeah, little by little, they'll figure out how to pull it off. I like the idea that you sent me in regards to the uh, the box seating. I, I love that idea. That thing makes a lot of sense. Right, in the UK, yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. So, what do you got tonight, Brian? What, what do you want well, to share? Well, um, I was listening to the radio earlier today. I, I had to take a trip up to the post office. And um, the Howard Stern show was on, and every once in a while, like Howard is obsessed with his diet, he, but he's one of those guys that goes by the old school, you know, calories in, calories out, and low fat, and well, now he's vegan because his, his wife, she's this big animal rescue person, and she's vegan, and she's got him doing the vegan thing, and... Uh, I mean, I've heard him talk about it over the years, but uh, um, today somebody called in. It was a dietitian, and um, I couldn't believe the advice she was giving him. <laughs> uh, you know, she, she she obviously learned the old school way. You right. know, uh, whole grains and fruits, and you know, I forget how many grams. She, what she say. 30 grams of fiber a day and like all this this info is like old like out of date and I, you know I always I wish I could call it and say wait a minute <laughs> uh, hey this is the year 2020 have you uh, read some some studies that have been done recently since the the paid studies that were done by uh, yeah by the food industry in the 60s yeah and it's crazy um, I'm forgetting what, uh, I, I didn't hear the whole thing. I had to get it because I got to the post office at one point and I was sitting there and they, 
you know, they kept getting sidetracked and, and then coming back to it. But uh, I finally got out of the car and went in. So I missed a little bit of it. But um, I mean, you know, the diet thing, the more it unfolds, you know, I, I hear a lot of people that have, you know, were vegan, then they went keto, then they went carnivore, then, and then from carnivore, they sort of backtrack and go back into um, adding carbs um, and seem to do okay. And I, I was listening to a podcast today um, of somebody I follow on Instagram and um, and that's what they did but they it was it was very interesting they were, were they were talking about um, these autoimmune issues they had and that's the reason they they went to keto and carnivore from being vegan and right. uh, and it cleared up all those issues and now it's been a while and now they're adding this you know the carbs back in and you know, little by little, and and it, and they seem to be able to handle it. And their their way of looking at it is, uh, you know, going carnivore for that amount of time sort of helped them heal their gut and what right. they, all the issues they were having. So now, when they add these few things back, they're able to handle them now because they're they're healthy. Their their guts are healthy, right. which makes a lot of sense. That does make a lot of sense. I just know I follow. Uh, I don't know Joe, uh, Jay Campbell. Um, he's probably one of the utmost ex experts in regards to uh, building muscle and 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 uh, a health hack expert. And I know he says over and over again, flat out, if you go vegan for permanently, you're going to do damage to your body that will not be able to be reversed. And he says, there's all, he says, as a matter of fact, I'm pulling up a quote right now. He was basically saying that DHA is really important stuff and you can't get it from plants. I won't bore you with further details, plenty of which can be obtained by reading the full article. But he says, look, I wish you could. I love the fact that if I could just eat plants and get what I need to survive, I'd love to go that way because I'm not into the whole, you know, having to kill animals. But for your survival, your body needs what meat provides. Yeah, and plants and plants cannot provide it for you. No matter how much you eat, he's like, they cannot provide it for you. It's going to do damage. And I can just tell you from experience, Peggy and I went vegan after we went Atkins. Then we went vegan, and it did her gut. I mean, she got sick. I actually felt pretty good on it. To be honest, I mean, I felt pretty good on it. I lost weight, felt good. Um, but I feel better and I feel more at home or more at ease eating a carnivore slash keto style diet, mm -hmm. uh, which is the reason why now it's a lifestyle for me because I'm not doing it for just one specific reason. It's a lifestyle, uh, that I want to live just because of how it, how healthy it is to my body. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and uh, yeah, even even like uh, being vegan and trying to add those missing nutrients through supplements, it's not the same as, as getting it from real food, and you can't absorb it um, correctly because you know there's something about you know eating the food that has the nutrients. It, it's it's like the natural way to eat it, and so your body knows what to do with it. But when you're just eating like a pill or a, you know, capsule or a powder, and you know, a lot of times if you're not eating like say animal fat with it, it, it that's what, um, that's how your body absorbs it along with the fat and stuff. And if you don't have that, then then it sort of just passes on through with all the rest of the plants. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a natural progression, and I say this all the time. I said, you know, truth needs no defending. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, you don't see birds buying plane tickets to fly, to, to fly south for the winter, you know. So our natural human DNA requires us and is built with these teeth to eat meat. We're, we're, we're not 
to eat plants, you know, and so to eat, so to eat plants and to eat plants only is like a bird getting on a plane, buying a plane ticket and flying south on, you know, southwest to fly south for the winter when they have the ability to fly on their own. We have the ability to eat the feet or eat the meat, eat the food that's going to nourish our body. So that's what we should do. And, you know, I know, you know, you know, you talk about Howard Stern, you know, eating, eat going vegan. I know President Bill Clinton. I know there are a lot of people who have gone vegan or vegetarian. And I just don't know of anyone that over a 10 year span, it hasn't done damage to them. I don't know anybody who's done it for longer than 10 years that hasn't had, that hasn't caused their body damage. Yeah, well, yeah, and I've also heard, you know, when somebody does decide to go vegan, they feel better at first, but I think it's just because they've gotten off the junk food and they're eating, a, a, you know, a healthier version of food, but, oh, wow, there goes a couple deer running through the field. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, it, but, not, but over long term, you know, we're, we're set up a, a certain way. I mean, that's the way we were made. And, and uh, even the, the, what's his name? The carb doctor, I forget his name. He had a, I follow him on Instagram and he had this thing about, you know, breastfeeding the milk is, is actually carnivore. And um, uh, baby formula is plant-based. And usually if... You know, if, if a mother can breastfeed, that's the healthiest thing. And, it, and that's nature. I mean, it's provided for the kid and that's what they're supposed to have. Um, and when people go off and start giving the, the baby formula, you know, some synthetic, uh, you know, breast milk, that's when like problems start, you know, they start early. Yeah, I think, I think there's, I, I mean, I can't recall the, the name of the studies, but I know the studies done on babies who have been breastfed the first two years of their life, their immune system, and they're less likely to, to have sickness or major illness later on through life. But as you were saying, the uh, babies who, for whatever reason, had to be put on uh, milk at a bottle, uh, because for whatever reason their mom cannot provide breast milk, um, they have issues. They have mi issues building up an immune system. To so there is a there is a natural progression. Uh, you know, cows are meant to uh, to 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 graze on grass, and and they have the stomachs to break down that grass, and they have the four digestive uh, stomachs to to digest that grass, and you know, and and whatever you, whatever it does uh, to to bring that nutrients into their their meat and then we're we have the the equipment to be able to devour that meat and it's just a full circle of life there's 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 nothing perfect but the reality of it is we can't be out in a field grazing with the cows eating grass and getting what we need because we don't have, our body doesn't have four stomachs. We don't have the ability to break down. We don't have the enzymes to be able to break down. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. Our en our enzymes are are meant to break down protein and meat. I mean that that's what they're. Uh... Yeah, and I got nothing against. I mean, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, do whatever you you feel your body's telling you to go do, and if that's vegan or or vegetarian or whatever plan, I, I definitely listen to your body. And I got nothing against any of them. I'm just saying that what I have observed and the studies that I have read says that for long term, it's just not healthy for you. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, I yeah, I, I feel the same. It's like, um, and everybody's different, you know. Every, everybody can handle something in different ways, and and uh, I just know for myself, this is the the best way for me. It's like. Uh, but I know other people that can eat vegetables, no problem. And, and uh, you know, if, if somebody can do that, that's, you know, that's, that's cool for them. But, you know, I, 
I just follow my body and, and what my body wants. And, um, you know, I have certain goals in mind, you know, as far as building muscle and all that stuff. So that's why I do it. <laughs> and right, I no. feel so much better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the main reason. And I tell you, you know, our, our guest that we had on last week, uh, Chris, or Chris, and, and what he had to share about, you know, the power, the power that comes from intermittent fasting. And we've had many people talk about it. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, we got, while we're talking about that, we got a really great guest that will be bringing on uh, to Keto Rocks in September that's uh, done many talks on TED Talks. So we're, it's going to be a real treat to be able to have her. But, you know, last week, Chris talked about the, the benefits of being on the intermittent fasting. And we, we, we keep harping on the intermittent fasting. But yeah. to me, that's one of the key components. I mean, that totally changed my life when I started doing integrating uh intermittent fasting and fasting um i think i've said this before in the show i you know i used to fast at least three days a week every week i did that for about a year um i but i'm back you know but i like the the eating window so i you know, i'll go a day i go anywhere from at least 16 hours to 24 hours some but some days i mean sometime i my body says hey let's i just need to step away from everything and i do for for a couple of days um but the intermittent fasting, I think, is another key component uh, for people to to exert uh, their power over over food. It's like you know you're able to depart. Uh, you're able to put food on the shelf and not let the food be your your god or your or your or, your, or lead you. You're able to lead the food. You're able to start to see food as fuel, not see food as a a comfort. Um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. This is that's the same with me when when I start intermittent fasting. It's it's a uh, it definitely um, you know once I get to my cutoff point, then no matter how much I want something, I it's like well I'm fasting so I can't. Um, and that's that's one of the benefits, but the other one is it does it, it puts you in touch with your body, and you realize, oh, I'm not even hungry. Why why do I want that? It's it's like, uh, you know, and if you want say if I wasn't fasting at that moment, I pro would have probably given in to that that urge, you know, and thought I was hungry and thought I needed a little snack. And on that that was the other thing that dietitian was talking about snacking and. She eats five to six meals a day and snacks in between. Like that's an odd thing for a dietitian to promote. <laughs> well, you know that that just shows you she's still reading from that old sheet of yeah. uh, of wisdom that that old sheet of music that she's that she's reading from and still giving advice on has been proven to not be the best way for humans. Um, yeah. Although, I mean, the way she, I didn't see her or anything, or, but the way she described herself, she sounded like she was healthy. So, I mean, she didn't say she was vegan or anything, but, but just, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know her. At, at, you know what, as you said earlier, and I totally agree with you, everybody's different. Like, you know, I, today's, uh, my, one of my best friends, he lost both his parents and his father was 91 years old. You know, he didn't live a keto lifestyle, um, but, you know, he was a, he was six foot. He was slim his whole life. And some people just have a metabolism that, you know, they, they he came from the um, um, moderation is, is the way to live life. And he came from a place of moderation because he was a, uh, a, um, he was born in 19, well, 91 puts him back into depression age. So he was a depression baby, grew up in the depression. And so, you know, everything meant something and moderation was his key to life. He said, so moderation is, you know, some people that works, you know, that's eating five to seven little small meals snacking throughout the day and you're able to do it and you're an active person, you know, maybe that works for you. But if you're someone who has to, to, to go to work or sit behind a desk for, for eight hours a day, that's snacking while you sit on your butt for eight hours, yeah. probably not going to work for you. Yeah. Um, so everybody's different. So let's, you know, I think we've been perfectly clear that we're not saying that keto is the only way we're only saying that 
keto is a way if you're looking for a healthier lifestyle than what you may be uh, yeah. doing now. And then also if there's if there are other health issues, auto autoimmune issues, and all that stuff, and you're looking to to fix them, or or uh, or especially uh, you know metabolic syndrome or type two diabetes, uh, you know keto or carnivore are, are the best way or the only way really to reverse it. Uh, you know unless you want to go down the path of uh, big pharma and medication for the rest of your life and and watch it just keep progressing until you're dead. <laughs> yeah, I uh, when I, I got I see people like that and and. And when we're meeting with people and people bring up, they, they said their doctor's appointment and they bring up that they're on this or they're having to get the, an insulin pump or they've been diagnosed with diabetes and you're like, no, 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 it's reversible. It's, it's reversible. But, you know, it's amazing. Some people, would, God love them, would rather take a, a, a drug or, or shoot insulin into them on a daily basis than to become the governor of their food. They, they don't want to, to yeah. do what they have, what's possible. Um, that is strange. But, you know, there, then again, you know, a lot of doctors are given bad advice when it comes to the food part. Right. So there's no way that the person's going to get better if they keep, you know, doing the recommended diet that their doctors tell them. It's just going to make it worse and worse and worse. Yeah. I mean, I think I told my story. I mean, I remember I went to my, I went to a doctor because I hadn't been to one in a while and, and Peggy really wanted me to have a physical. So I guess it was about three years. I want to say three or four years ago, I went to this doctor um, and I had a physical and, you know, he's telling me what, he's asking me what I eat. I'm telling him. And then he's like, Okay, well, I really want you to uh, to cut out your high fat meats. I want you to eat, you know, chicken. Take the skin off, and you know, you need to cut down on your egg intake. And and I and I hear all that. I'm like, you don't have a clue. I mean, I mean, no offense, I'm not, but you don't have a clue on how the body really works. You only have a clue as to what you were told uh, is good for the body, but you don't have the experience to back that up. And he's like, well, you know, you, we want to make sure you're healthy. I'm like, did you hear what I said? I don't get sick. I like, I haven't been sick in years. I don't get sick. You know, it's, but they don't hear any of that. They go right down the script that they're taught to, to tell you. And, and you just go, okay, I just give up. All right. <laughs> just, just give me my check. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pay this and I will not come back here again. Um, and so it's, it's just, it's, I don't know when it's ever going to make a change. You know, you got people like Dr. Ken Berry, who's written books and, 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 and encourages people to, to definitely, uh, question what their doctor is prescribing and, and come at it from a respectful manner, which, you know, we should, but, you know, you're also paying that doctor, uh, a lot of money to, tell you the best way to keep your body uh, at its healthiest, you should be able to ask questions and say, well, listen, I've read this about this study about carnivore diet, the, 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 the benefits of going keto. And I've also, you know, I've heard that eating five to seven meals or snacking my way through the day is not necessarily the best thing for my body. What do you know about intermittent fasting? Mm -hmm. And, and there's nothing wrong with, with questioning your doctor. And I think the only way that we're going to be able to get past what they've been taught, which is what's been bought uh, by big pharma or uh, the food industry to, to really have their, their minions out there to be able to give it credibility through their, um, by being a doctor to be able to write you a prescription for a statin when, you know, I, diabetes keeps coming back. I mean, we, we have a country that's, that's loaded with people who are dealing with uh, diabetes, whether it's type one or type two. And it saddens me because it's so reversible in such a short period of time that you can come off of having to be on insulin or, or be a pre-diabetic just by changing your dietary habits can change your likelihood 
of living a healthier life, healthier life, I don't know why you wouldn't give it 30 days to give it a shot. Yeah. Except yeah. that, that people put more credence on a doctor's, you know, telling them as opposed to them reading something they may have re see a podcast or see on Google or read a book by Dr. Ken Berry or, or hear a pot, you know, it's just that they believe whatever the doctor says is the gospel. Well, yeah. And unfortunately, you know, going to the doctor and getting a prescription for some kind of medication is the normal, uh, is the norm, you know, and that's, you know, people think that's the way it works. You know, they don't realize there's another way. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, you know, they used to, doctors write a, a prescription for antibiotics when you just go in for anything for the most part, because people want to feel like they were heard and they need something to take because if they take something, they're going to get well. Right. And, and they don't have, they don't have the understanding that those antibiotics wreak havoc in your intestinal tract and your digestive tract and your health really does start from your gut. Your gut really is where your health begins. And when you destroy that good bacteria that you have in your, in your digestive tract in your gut, because that's what antibiotics do, they kill that bacteria, you know, and you're not taking probiotics to rebuild up that you can it can take years to recover from that i mean peggy took forever to recover from from that but that's exactly what happened to to her mm -hmm. and it, it happens to a lot of people then you really are lost as to why you're dealing with these why, why am i dealing with this issue well it, it could have happened because two years ago you went to the doctor three times in a year uh, for a cold or a flu or and they prescribed antibiotics for you and it just wreaked havoc on your system and your system has not recovered from yeah. it. Yeah. I've heard it compared to wiping out the rainforest <laughs> when, when, you know, you get put on antibiotics. Yeah. And so it takes, and it takes, yeah, years for it to rebuild. To regrow. Yeah. I mean, it's just like anything else, you know, no matter how bad you want the tomato plant to be already mature and producing fruit, you know, it starts with a seed. It's got to grow and no different than the bacteria that's in your, uh, in your gut, uh, when it's wiped out, it's wiped out. It's going to take a time for it to build back up to the levels that it needs to be to be able to have a balanced system. I don't know how many people out there live in the country or live uh, on a uh, a septic system, but a septic system as opposed to public sewers, it's a it's a great analogy. You know, your septic system breaks down uh, your waste uh, that comes from your household and if you get it pumped out, sometimes the, the, the bacteria that was in there was breaking down all that waste gets flushed out and it takes a while before your septic system is actually able to be functioning as the way it was intended to function. And it's the same way our body is. Our, once you kill that good bacteria, it takes a while for it to be able to build that back up. And during that time, you know, you're going to, you're going to have issues, um, whether it be diarrhea or, or other digestive tract issues uh, until it gets built back up, or you're going to have a hard time having an immune system. Your immune system runs off of, off of that as well. So it just well, puts you, it puts that you, and, go that, ahead, Brian. Yeah. And, and it also, I mean, uh, your guts, I mean, that's where you absorb nutrients, you know? So if you don't have the things in there to, to extract the nutrients and all that stuff, you, you know, that's another thing it affects. So, you, you know, you just, once, once you know, and, and, and you say, well, Jim and Brian, how do you know? You'll know when you actually are able to live this kind of lifestyle, even if it's for temporary, just so you can get an understanding. And like I say, be honest with yourself, you know, and I know some people who have really given uh, keto a try and their body reacted, an adverse reaction to it. And that's fine. I mean, everybody's built differently. You got to then go deeper and find out why your body's reacting that way to it and, and, and find a way to, to be able to uh, eat your way back to health, however that, that may be. But yeah. yeah, in fact, I mean, when I went keto, it, it, I got somewhat better, but it wasn't quite there yet. And uh, when I tried out carnivore, it was only going to be temporary. 
I was going to do it like for a month, but the benefits were so great that it was like, wow, maybe I should keep going with this. <laughs> and um, I mean, I, I first I bounced back and forth between that and keto, but once I finally committed to the carnivore thing, yeah, it was one of those things where I just kept taking it, just extending it and extending it and, uh, you know, and then every once in a while I throw something back in there that I used to eat and, and I go, oh, okay, now I see what, what that feeling was. It was from this food, <laughs> you know, because it was isolated. It wasn't like I was eating it all the time like I used to. So I was able to, you know, sort of pinpoint the foods that caused me the problems. And, you know, and... You know, a lot of times it, it, it's something that I used to love, but I, I just know I can't eat it now because I know what it's going to do to me. Yeah, I know when I was younger, I used to literally, they did a great marketing job and I, I, I bought into it hook, line and sinker. But I, as, a, as, a, as a youth, I loved milk. I mean, I probably drank a half a gallon of milk uh, every day. And, and, you know, especially when I wasn't paying for it, I'm just living in my parents' house and I'm living off of them. I, drink, I mean, I truly did eat them out of house and home. Uh, but I would, I would drink a half a gallon of milk almost every day for sure. I loved it. And then I would, you know, I, then I started to make chocolate milk out of it. I just loved it. And so milk was definitely a staple. Of course, you know, I bought into the whole, you know, glass of milk a day, the calcium and that you need and all that. Now, once I gave up milk, because I, I started to realize later on in life that milk started causing me issues and then I just kind of removed it from my diet and then of course with uh with I do do creamer occasionally now but I haven't done creamer I have even whipping cream I have not done it in a couple weeks now I think it's been three weeks I've been doing what you say Brian I've been putting my electro I've been putting my Redmond electrolyte salts in my coffee in the morning um and as I said I actually like it better. I don't even know if I could take the coffee. It probably tastes really sweet to me now. And I went back to that, but I can tell you, and, I'm, and my point behind this is I'm feeling better in my digestive system is feeling healthier mm -hmm. um, by not having the whipping cream. Although yeah, it messes with me too. Although I was, I was at the store today. I actually still was looking for an ice cream machine because you and Emily with that ice cream is just like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, it 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 looks it looks so good, and I I'm not that I'm going to eat it every day, but I would like to have it maybe once in a while, just to to have some just have a treat. Yeah, well, it's actually it's it's worth trying at least once to just to make it. It's it's uh yeah, it's pretty cool. But it's funny you're talking about the ice cream because I I went to had to go pick up a meat order yesterday. And it's at this um, organic market in Hendersonville, and they have they sell um, heavy cream there in glass jars, and uh, that's what I used for um, this last batch of ice cream. I mean, I sometimes I can, I can get cream from the person I get eggs from, and it's the really good raw cream. But because I kept messing up my ice cream, the last time I I just bought it from the Hendersonville one, and it's pa it's pasteurized, but it's still really good cream. So that's what I use for the ice cream because I thought, well, if I mess it up, it won't be like the good cream. Right. But uh, so anyway, yesterday I had to go back up there and pick up my meat order and I had the empty jar because you can get, they, they charge you deposit on the jar. So you, you take it back and I walk in there and I and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, should I get another cream? But then it was like, no, nah, then I'll have to, you know, use it for something. So I just took the jar back and set it on the counter and they gave me my $2 back or whatever it was for the, for the deposit. But so I didn't, I didn't get any more cream. I'm going to get that. Left, left the temp, left the temptation on the farm, huh? Yeah. 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 But I did get, uh, that Tennessee grass fed place where I get my meat. They, uh, they, on Instagram, they have their, they, they'll post stuff on Instagram and they, they, uh, mention that they now have, uh, raw cream butter Ooh. and but they can't advertise it on their website because raw cream is not legal fda approved yeah so um they private i made a comment and they private messaged me and said you know next time you place an order let us know so i did and uh so so yesterday when i picked up my order i had two pounds of uh, raw cream in my bag 
<laughs> yeah, it's like uh, the farm that we get our, our eggs and meats from. Um, Not raw cream, raw butter, I'm sorry. Raw butter, no, no, I hear you. Like, you know, eggs, by having our own chickens, you know, when we go out and get eggs, eggs do not need to be refrigerated. If and so they, yeah, they if can they last. Been, if they haven't been washed, they don't have right. to Right, so we, so when I call the farm up, they, of course, they, they have to follow guidelines and they wash the eggs and they put them in the refrigerator. But I have to call them up and say, hey, look, I need to make up five dozen non-washed, non-refrigerated eggs. So literally, they go, well, we're, we're going to pick up our eggs around 2 o'clock. So I literally show up around 2, and they're out in the fields collecting the chicken, I mean, the, the eggs. Um, they bring them in these baskets, and they go, all right, have at it. And so I get a chance to put together my own five dozen eggs. And uh, because we don't store them in the refrigerator unless we're going to use them. And, you know, most people don't. At, at first, I'll be honest with you, it was weird to me that that – not because you're just so brain not brainwashed you're so programmed uh, to put eggs in the refrigerator you buy them in the store in the refrigerator you put them in. so when we started raising the chickens and doing eggs i guess uh, 10 years ago you know we started putting them in the refrigerator too and then peggy's like hey i'm reading these articles and we don't have to put them in the refrigerator this is how long they can last and so then we we started doing that so we do that just because they have a longer shelf life if they, so we just keep them in the garage. And then as we need them, we'll bring a couple dozen and keep them in the fridge. Um, but for the most part, but yeah, but I have to do it that way. It's not like they advertise. Cause I said, I asked the guy, I said, do you keep your eggs in the refrigerator? He goes off the record. No, I eat them just like you do. I keep them, I keep them, but, but I can't sell, I cannot sell them that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you won't find the raw cream in in a supermarket because they can't sell it. Yeah, well, I know, I know, you know, even even in Virginia, they they've gone after people who because when we had our cows, we used to you know milk our own cows and have our own milk and made our own cream and made our own cheeses, and people would go, "Well, you have un you you drink unpasteurized milk?" And I said, "Yep," yeah. and they're like, "Aren't you afraid?" I'm like, no. That's, um, that's the healthiest way to drink it. Yep. And, uh, but unfortunately, you, like you said, you can't go out to the store and buy it that way. And farmers are not even supposed to sell it that way. But the reality of it is that's the healthiest way for you to be able to, to take it. It's just, mm -hmm. and that's so sad. It just sounds, it, when you're, as I'm saying this, I'm going, how sad is that? That the healthiest way for you to take something and we're not, allowed to, to take it that way yeah because the yeah because the government tells us we can yeah just doesn't make any just makes makes no sense whatsoever so but talking about ice cream i uh had ran a contest so we had ran a contest to whoever uh got the most likes of posting a picture of themselves wearing a, a keto rocks mask and a, a lot of you all uh, have been posting your pictures i know uh Joan Chapman posted posted yesterday and was wearing her at work uh, her her keto rocks mask. Yes. But the one who got the most likes was uh, was your friend Emily Brian. Ah, oh, Emily. Yeah. Speaking of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So so Emily, we will be sending out a, uh, a another keto rocks mask to you. So I'll uh, I'll reach out to you and. Uh, get your address or I'll send it to Brian and let Brian deliver to you when you're in, I'm sure you're going to the show in Pennsylvania. So yeah, one way, one way or the other, we will, we will get it to you. So congratulations for posting your picture. Congratulations, congratulations for getting the most likes and congratulations for, uh, for making that awesome ice cream as well. Cause it definitely looks delicious. And because of you following Brian's lead, I'm going to follow both of you and eventually <laughs> find myself an ice cream uh, maker and actually make that ice cream that uh, Brian posted on. Hey, but I did get a, Hey, I got a freezer delivered. I got a, I got a, a full freezer just waiting for that half a cow cool. that will be slaughtered in September. Wow. Did you get a, a chest freezer or upright? No, upright. I love uprights. Okay. Yeah. So I, uh, I have one empty upright freezer and, uh, Man, it's brand new, showed up, 
and it actually was pretty cheap. Uh, we got it, I think Peggy ordered it from, um, from one of those box stores. And uh, I'm just happy it actually came in. It's plugged in and just ready for its contents. What, what, what's the cubic feet? Um, that off hand? I, it, it's, a, uh, it's a bigger, I, I want to say it's 14, 15. Oh, it's okay. a pretty big freezer. Nice. So I, 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 should, I should have room for, for half a cow. How are you liking yours? I know you, you got yours too. Well, I only have a few odds and ends down there now. Uh, you know, I put a few things in there, but then I'm thinking, well, I don't want to fill it up because I want to, you know, have room if I ever do. You know, if I get used to filling it up, then I'll, then when if I do buy like a half or a quarter cow, it's like going to be like, uh oh, now I got to shove this in there. <laughs> well, that's the bad thing. Either our last time, not this last time, but the time before last when we actually had a freezer full of, of half a cow that we had bought. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I do like, I like going out and shopping for meat. I like being able to see. And then yeah. when you got a freezer full of meat, you're like, I want this, but I got a freezer full of meat. I don't, should be buying this when I got a whole freezer full of meat. And so. Well, I do that sometimes if I, you know, actually this, I think it was, yeah, this week, earlier in the week, I, uh, I haven't, I've got stuff in my freezer, but I, I, it's like, I'll get to the end of the day and I'm like, I can't decide what I want to eat and I need to pull something out. So it thaws. And the other day I, I did, I forgot. And I got up the next day and, uh, I just, well, the first day I was home, I had to make that omelet cause I had nothing besides eggs and <laughs> can, a canned mackerel. So I made a mackerel omelet, omelet. <laughs> but, uh, so I went to the store and, you know, I walked by the meat counter, of course, and there's these nice juicy ribeyes. So I just grabbed a couple of those and I was like, oh, fresh ribeye. I'm going to eat this. <laughs> so the second day I had that, that nice ribeye. I love that. Matter of fact, you had, you had ribeye today, right? Did you send this, you post a picture? You had ribeye because I had ribeye today. I just smoked it on the Trager. Yesterday. And, yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Okay. Yesterday. I saw your picture. I, and today we just had ribeye. We had ribeye today. Gosh, it was delicious. I love cooking it on the trigger the way we yeah. cook it it's just is it was so flavorful and tender and good uh it was good <laughs> mm. anyway well it is that time again so any parting words you have brian before for everybody i know you guys are playing tomorrow i know you're gonna see a lot of your friends tomorrow in pennsylvania so it's gonna be a, a, a good day for for kicks and their fans yeah, I got my fingers crossed that I remember the songs. <laughs> I hope I, I hope I don't stumble over things too badly. <laughs> well, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure it'll all come back to me once I get up there. Yeah, it'll be all good. It'll be all good. So anyway, well, we'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. As it always, stay well, stay safe, stay out of the hospital. We love you. We'll see you and next eat, Friday. And eat your meat. <laughs> and eat your meat. All right, we'll see you guys. <laughs>